Hello and welcome to How to Film Weddings. My name is Nick Miller and today I'm gonna open up my gear bag and show you every single thing that I am taking to a wedding. I'm gonna break this up into a few parts. We're gonna cover camera equipment, audio, lighting, storage, support, like tripods, that sort of stuff. Is that the right word? Support? And then I'm gonna talk of the bags that we are taking to both local and destination weddings. First thing I wanted to talk about is camera equipment, camera that we're taking. So we actually have two of the FX3s uh, that we take to our weddings. You're only seeing one of them because I'm using the other one to record this video. The main lens that I am on on a wedding day is the uh, G Master 50 millimeter 1.2. Absolutely love this lens. I love the focal length. I love the image quality. Uh, it's fast and it just looks so, so good. So we have two of these lenses. Because the FX3s do not have a viewfinder, uh, we have some nice little Shinobi monitors, which I will put on here in a second. But this is a small rig attachment uh, that so I can put the monitor directly on top of the camera. And so it just goes in just like this. I also have this Shinobi uh, made HDMI cable. It's designed just to be right there. It's looped. It works great. This is an actual Shinobi battery. Um, I have, I think we have four, four of these batteries. Uh, pretty much two batteries will get me through an entire wedding day and I'm not putting this one on um, until close after we've been shooting for seven hours or so. So almost an entire wedding day can get me on one battery with this monitor. So we have two of those, two for me, two for Jen. As far as camera batteries, we have nine total. So three um, for each of our cameras. Uh, the, the gimbal camera, I don't use it very much. So I'm typically only using one battery, but so then I can do four in my camera and four in Jen's if we need to be that way. But uh, we haven't run into a situation where you have ran out of those Sony batteries. Uh, for the Shinobi monitor here, I paid for an accessory pack. And the big thing that it came with was an extra battery. And then it came with this nice little hood that I can put over the monitor. And now it blocks out the sun so I can see my image no matter how sunny it is outside. It's worth the accessory pack price just for this little thing. Before switching over to Sony, we shot on the Canon C100. And in switching to the Sony, there are so many great things that we loved about this. Um, the 4K, uh, S-Log, 10-bit color, so many great things about this camera that we loved. But we were missing those ND filters, the built-in ND filters. And so uh, recently, I picked up the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon uh, Helix Mag Lock. Um, variable NDs and we've I've gotten a chance to use them a couple times and I love them. This has taken away um, one of the biggest hurdles that I've had shooting with the Sony cameras. I really like this system and let me show you how it works really quick. You take the, uh, the thread adapter and you screw it right onto the front of your lens. One of the great things about this system is that it is magnetic. So I just put this filter on and then I turn it and it locks. Now I have my ND filter on and I can use it how I would uh, any other variable NDs. A big issue with ND filters whenever you screw them on is, uh, you know, you're outside getting some nice pretty detail shots or whatever you're getting and then you go inside to bride prep and you have the filter on there and then you'd have to take the time to unscrew it. Well, the great thing about this, you just click it and now it's off. Oh, going back outside, I'm going to put it right back on off on. It, it is so easy and so simple and I love this system. It works great. Two more lenses that we use on a wedding day are going to be the G Master 70 to 200s. Uh, I have one, Jen has one. They work great for ceremony, toasts, and first dances specifically. Jen gets some really, really nice detail shots with them as well. The third camera that we have is a Sony a7S III with a Sigma 24 to 70 and I put that on our Ronin S. The last camera that I'm using on a wedding day is going to be the DJI Air 2S. Um, I bought the Fly More combo with this to get extra batteries and also has the ND filters that put on it. Now we're gonna move over and talk about audio equipment on the wedding day. Uh, first thing I wanna talk about is these Tentacle Sync Track E recorders. These little lab guys are incredible. There are so many great features. They record in 32-bit float. The app works really great. But one of the things that I think sets it above and beyond some of the other things on the market is that you can get a 
time code syncer. So that before the wedding day starts, you start these things up together, you pair them together, and then you will record, uh, there's an audio thing, an audio jack that you take, plug it here at the bottom, and then you plug this in into your camera, and then these two things can now be synced together via time code. Uh, it saves you a lot of time, a lot of guesswork. You just let it record all day. Um, the last wedding, I had both of these things running for well over eight hours, and I still had lots of battery life left. Um, I think the box says that they can go 10. We've definitely pushed past that. So we have a couple of, of different uh, options here. The first one for the groom mic, and we also mic up our brides, is I have the COS 11D lav mics. Uh, these are a little bit spendier, they're a little bit more expensive, but I wanted that extra boost in audio quality in my groom and my bride mics. So I have two of these, uh, the black one for the groom and then a white one for the bride. Whenever we mic up the bride, um, I have a few extra things. One, uh, I have we have what are called undercovers, uh, stickies and undercovers. So these are little stickers um, and then you stick them on the dress, you put the lav mic on that and then you put the undercover over the top of it to hold it in place and kind of protect it a little bit. And then we put that, run the lav mic down the front of the bride's dress. And then we put her recorder in this Ursa leg strap right here. Uh, so that way we're able to mic the bride uh, all day long. Back to these tentacle sinks, we have three of these, groom, bride, and officiant. And then, um, and on the officiant mic, I'm just using the one that came with the tentacle. And then we have two additional DR10Ls just with us throughout the rest of the day. Uh, put them on uh, dad for first look or maybe anything else that might need to be captured throughout the day. Typically I'm keeping one of these on me so that as I run around and I say, oh, this needs record, I can grab that really quick. When it comes to recording board audio, whether the ceremony or the reception or any other time you might need it, I am using the Zoom F6. A few things I love about this. One, there are six inputs, so I can plug into various things if I need to do that. It is 32-bit float, which means that I can record a, uh, a high dynamic range of audio. So if it clips or it's too quiet, I can usually pull that audio back. You can put the Sony NP F970, I think are the batteries, you can put those on here and it can just run forever and ever. Anyway, uh, this, this little guy is incredible. It also has a time code jack on here too. So I can uh, sync uh, my tentacles to this thing as well and then everything can be on the same page. It, it, it works, works great. As far as cables go for the wedding day, um, there are a few things that I recommend that you have. One is going to be a straight up XLR cable. Uh, I actually bring two of these to every wedding. I have a three foot one and then a 10 foot one. You never know if you need something longer. And so I have one of these. Then I also have an XLR to quarter inch adapter right here. So I plug this into the end of my XLR cable and now I can uh, plug this in into the DJ board or something else if I need to, so there's that. And then I have last the XLR to RCA cable. Uh, I very, very, very rarely will use this one because it's just something that's not needed uh, very often, but if it ever is needed, I have it. A couple other recorders that I bring on the wedding day are the Tascam DR10X. Uh, this is an XLR right at the top. Uh, I usually take my attenuator, which is something that you should have, and what this does is it drops the dBs down. Uh, this one does 20, 30, and 40, so that if you have a really hot signal, it can cut the volume down so it doesn't blow it out. And I typically plug this into the back of a speaker. So that's what I'm doing with this one. And I just set it and I walk away and I let it run the rest of the evening. Another thing I bring is the Sony TX660. This is just a great little backup uh, in case you can't mic someone or something needs to happen really quick. It is also good to put it on uh, the microphone whenever there are toasts or if there's an open mic and it's getting passed around. I, I don't know, this is a great little backup for you to have. Additionally, something that I include as a part of my audio kit is going to be a mic stand and gaff tape. What I do is I take the microphone during toasts, I put it on my mic stand and then I gaff tape it to the mic stand so that someone cannot take the mic off and walk around. I spend a lot of time and energy getting the lighting right and I don't want to mess that up. Now we are gonna get into the lighting 
portion of the gear that we bring. And the first big boy that I bring along with us is going to be the Practilite 602. We actually have three of these. Um, lately, I've only been taking two of them just to save some room on gear whenever we travel, but we have three of these that we bring. Uh, I love these lights. I know with the rise of the Aperture 60X, it's cheaper, it's brighter. Um, I, this, I, I don't know, I was invested in these uh, before those came out, so that's why I'm still rocking these, but I think that these work, work great. I love it. they have a barn door that goes on, and then, ooh, kind of squeaky. Uh, barn door goes on there. With that, I have these uh, Kinotechnic, that's the brand that makes uh, the Practilites. Is, uh, this is a, a V-mount battery holder. So I plug this in here. Then I take my uh, V-mount battery. This is a 90, 95 watt hour by Andy Cine. So I get the battery on. And then with this red loop, I hang this on the light stand itself. And now I am able to light up my Practilite has an app that I can use, walk up to it, so I don't have to raise it and lower it every time I want to use the practice light. The little torch LED light was very popular among wedding filmmakers for quite a long time that has been discontinued, but I picked up this little aperture panel light and it works very well for me. It's not, uh, the throw isn't great as big as the Practilites, obviously it's just a little LED, but uh, I am using this as kind of a little fill light on the couple for the receptions, reception details, the cake. So this, this little guy has worked great for us. Uh, pretty, Pretty inexpensive, but very bright and works very well for the size and the format that it is. Earlier I said support. Um, I think stabilization is the right word that we want to use there. So all of our uh, tripods, monopods, gimbals, light stands, everything, I'm just going to throw it up on screen real quick. If you weren't able to write that down, make sure you click the link below in our description and you can see a full list of all of the gear that I take on a wedding day. Storage is a really big deal when it comes to wedding filmmakers, and so you need to have the right stuff so that you can record to your cameras properly, but then also back it up to your computer and your hard drives. Uh, we use these pro-grade 256 gigabyte SD cards in our FX3s. We have four of these, and we are dual recording everything. I have never run out of space on a wedding day for these. We're doing a mix of 60 and 24 frames per second. And then on uh, my A7S III, the gimbal, because I'm not filming as much stuff with that camera, I have 128 gigs, two of those in the A7S III. For my working drives, I have four of these two terabyte SanDisk SSDs uh, work great, really fast. I can edit off them uh, really well. And then I have a few backup eight terabyte drives that are USB 2. They're slow, but they're just to back up everything whenever I finish a project and I can upload it and it can all stay there in one spot. I'm editing all of this on my 2022 M1 MacBook Pro. As far as transporting our gear around, we have a few bags that we use. Uh, the first one is this roller bag from Low Pro. Man, it's it's big on screen. Anyway, uh, this fits in uh, overhead compartments on airplanes. It works great. It's a nice hard case. I don't think that this one, um, they make this specific bag anymore. I think it's discontinued. But if you check out our kit, I will have an updated one that is very, very similar to this one. The other bag that I recently got that I really, really love is this low pro camera backpack. I've started traveling more solo with some camera stuff and having a bag, this roller bag, and then bringing a suitcase and not wanting to check a bag, it doesn't work out super great. But this one can carry a lot of the camera gear that I want to have with me, especially with going Sony. It's a lot smaller. It opens up here like this. Lots of compartments inside. Fits a laptop right up here. Anyway, absolutely really, really love this bag. The other bag I want to talk about real quick is my big Timba. 48 inch roller bag. I put all of my tripods, my monopods, my light stands, my mic stand, everything stabilization except for my gimbal will go in that big roller bag. Uh, it gets really heavy, but uh, we take it with us every single time we travel with absolutely no problems. And I think that that's all of the gear that we take with us on a wedding day. Um, yeah. In case you missed anything or you want to go back and review, make sure you check out our kit in the link below. 
So what are some things that you're taking on a wedding day that maybe I missed or things that I'm not taking? What are some stuff that you have found super helpful for you on a wedding day gear wise that I really should check out? I would love to know what those things are. If you found this information helpful, give us a like, subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for tuning in and until next time, we will see ya.